Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Innovation Meets Energy Efficient Design, Bolimo Six-Way Pressure Independent Valves. My name is Michaela DeMarchi. I will be your host. In just a few moments, Rodrigo Marquez, Product Manager, will join the line and will begin his presentation. But before we move on to that, I'd like to just go over some housekeeping rules. We run our webinars as such with about a 25-minute uh, worth of content and then about a 5 to 10-minute question and answer session. Um, in which you will be able to ask Rodrigo questions regarding the presentation. All of our webinars are recorded so that if you want to review the presentation in its entirety at a later time, you can do so. We will send out a recording at a later time, and it will also be posted to um, our YouTube page. If you should have any technical difficulties, you can IM me via the chat feature on the GoToWebinar panel. We also have two handouts available today. If you'd like, you can download those and uh, review them at a later point. Without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Rodrigo. Okay, thank you, Michaela. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, to join us on that uh, webinar today. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about the six-way EPIV, uh, or new uh, launch product uh, the six-way pressure independent valve. Uh, I'm very excited to be here, uh, talk about this product right now, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy as well. So to start that, uh, today we're gonna talk about a little bit on the six-way valve. So how does it work? Uh, what is a six-way valve, a traditional one? Uh, why do we need a six-way valve? Uh, the pressure relief technology that Belimo has on that, uh, also about some application uh, and current solution. Uh, and later we're gonna start to talk about our product, our new launch. So six-way EPAV, the pressure independent valve. So, and again, why and how does it work? Selection, uh, specification, communication, settings, and I'm gonna show some case study as well. So later on, uh, you guys are gonna be able to, uh, you know, ask me, uh, do some questions, and I'm gonna try to uh, answer all that I can do. Okay. So uh, basically, to start that, uh, what is a six-way valve? So many people ask it, what is that, and why we need that? So basically, a six-way valve, it's a two, three-way valves that are mechanically linked. So Basically, it's, uh, you're gonna probably you guys are familiar with the three-way valves. So basically, it's two of that, and but linked uh, mechanically. Okay, so you guys gonna see uh, how it looks like, um, and how does it work? So on the six-way valves, we have that we call sequence one, which is uh, one side of the valve one part of the valve, and we have also the sequence two, which is the other part, so heating and cooling, okay? So we can do both in one valve, okay? So, uh, and this picture, you guys can see that on the top part, uh, supply flows through the valve, similar to a three-way diverting CCV. Uh, the CCV is our traditional control valve, okay? So basically, it's how it works. Uh, on the bottom part, you guys are gonna see that the returns flows similar, but in an opposite direction, okay? So you're gonna be able to see that on the top part, you're gonna supply the flow to the terminal unit, and on the bottom part, uh, this water, this flow will return uh, from the terminal unit, okay? So it's good to know that both upper and lower balls rotate together as flow increase or decrease, okay? Uh, so flow moves across the valve and not from top to bottom, okay? So it doesn't mix the, the uh, fluids or the media, or, you know, in this case, heating or cooling, depends what you're using. Uh, that's how it works on sequence one, okay? Uh, we also have that we call a closed position or a dead band. Uh, so in this position, uh, 45 degrees, the actuator will be positioned on that. So top and bottom part. So both will be at 45 degrees 
so which means closed for heating and cooling, okay? So again, both upper and lower balls rotate together uh, and no flow across the valve. Uh, going on that, uh, sequence two. Uh, so in this case, sequence two, uh, it's cooling, uh, but it could be heating easily. Depends what your application or what you're looking for. Um, again, top part, you're gonna see the supply uh, moves through the valve, similar to a three-way diverting CCV. And the, body par uh, the bottom part, uh, it's gonna be the return flow similar but in the opposite direction. The same idea as we had on the sequence one, but here with the you know cooling in this case. Uh, so top part going through uh, the valve and going to the terminal unit, and the bottom part return from the terminal unit. Okay. So here uh, we can also talk about this special feature that Belimo has a pressure relief. Uh, which is a patent uh, technology. So Belemo designed this technology to improve and make sure that we will not have problem uh, when we are changing from heating to cooling or vice versa, okay? For that reason, we know that when we are changing from heating to cooling or cooling to heating, we have some certain uh, pressure uh, modulating on that so to guarantee that you're gonna have the right uh, flow and also we will not damage anything on that, we develop or we de design this technology, so which is our pressure relief. Uh, the pressure relief, uh, it's based uh, on the top valve, so the top, the top part. Uh, you guys gonna see this groove on the ball, so this groove, it's a circumferential groove for pressure compensation, okay? So you guys are gonna see that the, uh, this groove guarantee, guarantees uh, pressure compensation between the heating, cooling element and sequence one water circuit, okay? So when we have this working, uh, you guys will not have any problems changing to a uh, heating or cooling, okay? So that's based what's gonna happen using this technology. So uh, you also gonna see that you just have this technology on this top ball valve, okay? Not on the bottom one, just the top one because it's uh, enough to compensate the pressure fluctuation between heating and cooling, okay? Uh, also, uh, common applications, uh, basically the six-way valves, it uh, used for uh, chilled beam and also radiant panels. Uh, and of course, if you have a special application, you can uh, let us know and we can try to figure out if it's gonna fit in your uh, specific application, okay? So just feel free. And if you have any special, uh, business, so we can try to work with that as well. Uh, so current solutions that we have uh, today for four pipe systems. So to the unit, we can have two coils in this terminal unit. So one for heating and one for cooling. Uh, so in that case, some people they use four valves, or I mean, let's say two valves, two control valves, one for uh, heating, another one for cooling, and more two balancing valves, manual balancing valves, to guarantee that you're gonna have your right flow on the terminal unit or in each uh, coil, okay? So yeah, which is really good to have uh, one specific or dedicated coil for each application, but on the other hand, uh, in this kind of uh, solution, you need two control valves, uh, you need two manual balancing valves, also two control sequence and two actuators, which means more points of control, and of course, more cost on labor, commissioning and balancing. So to try to save some money or try to optimize the systems, uh, some 
coils instead like uh, two coils in one terminal unit, you're gonna have one coil for both heating and cooling. So in that case, uh, it's gonna be good to have that because you can optimize your exchanger. Uh, but on the other hand, you need in that case four control valves. So to control everything in this case, supply and return. Also, you still need two manual balancing valves to guarantee that you're gonna have your required flow in the terminal unit for heating or cooling. Uh, in this type of solution, you also need uh, four control sequence uh, for actuators as well, uh, which means four points of control, a lot of things on that. And of course, your cost will be higher than the first one and labor as well, commissioning and balancing. Uh, uh, a current solution that instead to use four control valves, people use a three-way valve uh, and still need two control valves on the supply or return, depends uh, your application. So in that case, you still have a lot of valves, so three control valves in that case, two two-way valves and one three-way. Uh, you still need the two manual balancing valves to guarantee that you're gonna have your requested flow on the terminal unit. Uh, and you're gonna have three control sequence uh, and three uh, actuators or point of control. So again, uh, you have cost on labor to install everything on that. You have to commission all your actuators. So you have to go to the field and do that there. So it's gonna cost a little bit. And now, so you have, you still have to uh, balance the valves. The so why a six-way valve is needed? So basically you guys can see uh, on the drawings that we can save some products as well. So a uh, piece in the system. So in that case, we're gonna optimize instead to have like four or two or even three uh, control valves. In that case, you're gonna have only one control valve doing heating and cooling. Uh, two control sequence in one actuator, which is gonna save uh, money uh, on labor and also commissioning. Uh, but on the other hand, on the bad side, you still have to have uh, manual balancing valves there to compensate or to guarantee that you're gonna have your right flow in the terminal unit. Uh, yeah, that's true, it's a still manual balancing valves. You can improve that and that's why we have the next solution that I'm gonna present to you. So having the manual balancing valve in a variable flow system, all you guys know that uh, when pressure goes up uh, uh, on the flow side, because since the pressure goes up, your flow will increase as well, and goes, pressure goes down, your flow will decrease as well. So it's good to have the six-way valve uh, because you can save a lot of uh, money, uh, but on the other hand, you still have some issues on that. So uh, this case study, uh, we had this product, the six-way EPAV or pressure independent valve uh, on the six-way, uh, launched in Europe for, it's been two years, almost two years that we have this product. So in that case, uh, in France, uh, we were uh, asked to provide some solution to try to help the customer with their needs. So in this case, they was looking for a single valve, just one valve, to have a precise temperature control and also uh, a balancing system. So uh, they was looking for automatic or let's say permanent hydronic balancing uh, via the valve. Also, they were looking for some analysis and with the actual flow and things like that. Uh, they were looking to be like simple on the settings of the actuator and a small number uh, of products in the installation. 
So I'm gonna show you later how they could get with our next generation on the pressure independent six-way valve. So the next step, when we saw this case study, uh, we said, okay, so how can we help them with that? So that's why Belimo will develop based on our current solutions that we have today, the six-way valve plus the EPIV, which today we have since 2011, this, uh, the EPIV, the electronic pressure independent valve. So we combine both technologies that we have and make this uh, new product. Uh, the six-way six -way EPIV, okay? So, uh, uh, we have one six-way valve, and we also have a flow meter, a ultrasonic flow meter on that. So, this flow meter will send some signal to the actuator. In this case, we're gonna have a smart actuator, okay? So this is smart actuator. We will start to modulate based on flow to guarantee that you're gonna have your right flow uh, on the terminal unit. So always when you start to increase or decrease the flow based on the pressure change in the system, this signal will send to the actuator and the actuator will start to change. So basically it's pretty much what we already do on the regular EPIV, the two-way valve that we have, but now, moving this technology to the six-way valve, okay? So, in this case, we can save a lot of money uh, on labors and also parts. So, what is good here is you can have your optimal. You just need one control valve. You still have two control se sequences on that, so heating and cooling, but just in one actuator so you still have to commission that but just one actuator okay so it's going to reduce your time of commission in the field also the labor will be you cost much less than usual uh, you don't need any manual balancing valves on that because here we're gonna have a pressure independent valve okay and of course it translates that you're gonna have automatically balancing system regardless the pressure change. Uh, also, a good thing here is that you're gonna see what's going on in the field. So with the ultrasonic flow meter, you can see the true flow. So no calculation, nothing, just the true flow based on the ultrasonic flow meter. You can read this information. Uh, I'm gonna show later how can you read that. Uh, and also, you're gonna have an easy way to setting the flows or some parameters and cooling. So regarding the selection of this valve, so you guys uh, today, you think on authority, CVs, pressure drop, things like that. And for the pressure independent valves, even for the six way one, you don't need to think on that, only flow. So flow, it's important to know what you want to get and that's how you need or what do you need to select your valve so depends on your flow we're going to select the right valve for that so about some specification of the valves um, it's uh here we have all the considerations so basically uh, what we have today on the current product the current six-way valve uh, today we just have half and three-quarter inch uh, and some good things to mention to mention here that we don't have on the current product on the six-way traditional six-way is that we have this tolerance because it's based on the flow meter so measurement it's plus minus two percent which is really good compared with the other solutions that we have uh, on some automation stuff or some calculations and stuff so also we have this control tolerance plus minus six percent and the repeatability, which is plus minus 0.5%. So that's really important to have this repeatability very low, you know, like very precise, very accurate. Uh, so on the six-way EPIV, we have two flavors here. So half inch and three quarter, half inch 5.5 uh, GPM up to 5.5 for both heating and cooling and uh, three quarter, 10. 3 GPM 
also uh, both heating or cooling, okay? So some installation stuff here. So you guys gonna see that uh, we are gonna cheap that items for you. So three different part numbers, or I mean, I'm sorry, uh, one part number, but three parts on that. Uh, so it's which gonna which gonna be the six way valve, the flow meter, and this is space tube that we call. So this space tube means that uh, this five times diameter because we have to guarantee that we're gonna have this five times diameter in the inlet of the sensor to guarantee that they're gonna be accurate enough, okay? So on that part, you guys can install the sensor on the return side or you can install that on the supply side. Okay, so depends where you're gonna install, you have to have this uh, five times diameter, this is straight pipe uh, on the inlet of the sensor, okay? So about the communication stuff, so you can do that analog as usual, or you can do that uh, via Modbus BACnet, uh, Modbus RTU or BACnet uh, MSTP, no IP uh, for this actuator, but you can do that uh, RTU for Modbus and uh, for settings. So you have different ways to setting the valve. So you can use our ZT8, which is this little uh, orange box. So you can set all parameters on that. You can do that as well using Modbus or BACnet. Uh, and also we have this technology, the, the NFC, near field communication, that you can use your mobile, your phone, uh, Android or uh, iPhone or Apple. You can do both using this technology. So on the NFC settings, it's really cool too. So you can see, you guys can see on the screen of the, your mobile, uh, since you connect that there, uh, you can see what's going on. So overview, you can change the name of the valve. So let's say FC1 or whatever, chili bean one or any name that you want. So you can see what's going on, like if it's on the sequence one or two, so heating or cool which means our flow uh, in, uh, we also have the second uh, tab on the configuration stuff you can configure everything so you can also override uh, the control so you can send to a certain position if you want you can change from analog to bus communication 2 to 10 to 5 uh, 0 to 10 uh, normal or inverted control signal control mode from flow control, which is a pressure independent valve, but sometimes if you need to do some troubleshooting the installation, you can also use as, as a position control, which means a pressure dependent valve. So it's gonna follow, instead to follow flow, it's gonna follow the zero to 10 volts, for example. Uh, you can also set your Vmax one or two, which means your maximum flow that you're gonna have on heating or cooling. And in the end here, in the third tab, you can also see if you are facing some issues in the installation, like air bubbles. You're gonna be advised of that, okay? So, what I present in the beginning. So you guys are gonna see that in this case, we sold uh, 163 valves pressure independent valve six ways. So, which was really good to the customers because they were uh, able to have a simple and quick selection of uh, the settings. Uh, it was very safe on site and no installation errors, which was really good. Uh, they had a permanent hydronic balance in the system, which is a pressure independent valve, the six way one. Uh, it was really uh, fast to commission the installation as well, saving money and time. Also, a simple and quick uh, reparameterization. Uh, sometimes you need to do some things in the field. You think it's gonna happen things like that. And in the, in the field, you're gonna see that things can change. So you can do that easily with all these tools to uh, resetting everything. Uh, and of course, monitoring uh, the flow and some analysis and diagnostic as well. So 
if you guys need more information some tech docs also we have here you can download all these tech docs uh, manual instruction uh, and also submittals you guys can find easily on our website uh, or you can also see that on our new PGPL or product price list or select pro you, as well you can select those valves there so thank you very much I appreciate your time and let's see what we get Michaela thank you so much Rodrigo so for those of you who joined partway during the webinar now we've reached our question and answer session so if something has come up um, and you want to ask a question or make a comment what you need to do is open up your question box type in your question I will read it aloud and Rodrigo will answer the question as best as possible just a friendly reminder this webinar was recorded and will be posted to our YouTube site as well. Rodrigo, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, Michaela. Okay, so the first question, uh, what is the voltage signal to create 45 degree exactly? Uh, it's going to depend uh, when we are using flow control mode, which means pressure independent valves, it's going to depend what is your pressure in the system. So since it's a pressure independent valve, it's going to depend how many voltage you need to get the 45 degrees. So uh, it really depends. We have a chart that we can provide to you guys, and you're going to see what exactly is the voltage in each position. OK, uh, next question. Can a six-way valve be used for mixing and diverting? Uh, no, no. Actually, today it's just a uh, diverting valve. It's not a mixing valve. So yeah, that's pretty much that. It's a changeover valve. Okay. Um, how do you control the flow if there are different different flow requirements between heating and controlling? Yeah, that's uh, that's why we have this flow and or you need like heating or cooling you're going to start to read the flow that you're going to get in the installation and of course when you start to increase or decrease the pressure in the installation your flow uh it's going to start to increase or decrease as well so that's why we have the flow meter there to guarantee that this signal will send to the actuator and the actuator will start to modulate to get or to you know get your uh, design flow so that's why we put this flow meter in this technology to make sure that you're going to get your right flow. Okay. Um, what are the min and max flow rates? Uh, the minimal, uh, the maximum flow rate that you can have. So as I show you, you guys, uh, for half inch, you can have 5.5. Uh, GPM gallons per minute uh, on the three quarter you can have 10.3 G you can do that we can control is um, we have this rangeability of uh, 100 to 1 so it's a pretty low if you do the math so we are talking about a very very low flow so it's this rangeability uh, 100 to 1 so it's basically divide 5.5 or 10.3 divided by 100. So you're going to have your minimum flow that we can control. Okay, so this is kind of like a two-part question. Um, can you have different flows on both the heating and cooling? And how do you verify that flow? Uh, you can. You can have and you should have uh, basically because uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, most parts, you're going to have a higher flow on the cooling than you have on the heating. So yeah, definitely you can do that. You can set this information on that. And that's why it's really cool to have this NFC that you can just check the information using your mobile, your cell phone. And But you can also do this using or other tools like the ZTH, which is a Belimo small box, or you can check this information as well via BACnet or Modbus. So you can do it in a different ways. Okay. Um, what is the pipe size range for the six-way EPID? Uh, the, uh, the pipe size uh, range uh, today, uh, as I said, I, we have three-quarter and half-inch. 
But uh, of course, we know that uh, sometimes when you have a one inch pipe uh, or flow on the three quarter, 10.3 GPM, we can work with that easily on the one inch pipe size. But basically, we just have like two products, half inch and three quarter. And we should know that for PI valves, uh, we have to select based on flow and not on pipe size, okay? So it really depends. Sometimes in the field, we can have a one inch pipe, but the valve will be like a three quarter valve or sometimes even like a half inch valve. How often does the flow meter need to be calibrated? Uh, today it's a wet calibrated that we call. So from factory, you're gonna have the flow meter uh, calibrated already. Uh, we can also send a report or uh, a letter uh, showing all these things. And um, like all our products have like uh, five years warranty. So you don't need to care about that if you're facing some issues or if you think that something is wrong on the calibration stuff, you can just send back this uh, flow meter or like, let's say the whole assembly to Belimo and we're gonna make sure that everything is set. So uh, don't worry about recalibration in the field. Uh, we're gonna do that uh, in factory for you. Okay, last couple of questions and then unfortunately I'm gonna have to conclude the webinar. If after the fact you should have a question, comment, um, you can email me, uh, Michaela DeMarkey. My email was in uh, some of the communications, and I will pass it along to Rodrigo. Just a friendly reminder, we do have handouts today. So we have a tech doc for the six-way EPIV, as well as an electronic version of the 2018 product guide and price list. Um, so my next question, uh, normally heating and cooling have different GPM requirements. The flow sensor is only set to one GPM. Can that be adjusted for a certain requirement? Uh, actually, the flow meter, the flow sensor is not set for a certain flow. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be, of course, it's set for a certain flow, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna be set for the flow that you set on the actuator. So that's why the flow meter will have this range of flow. So let's say on the ten, on the three quarter valve. We have this 10.3, which is the maximum flow that we can have on the uh, three-quarter valve, uh, but the flow meter can read more than that. So yes, it's not set for the Vmax that you set on the actuator, so which means that it's a different thing. So the smart logic on the actuator will calculate uh, the opening to make sure that it's gonna deliver like 10.3 or 5 GPM or whatever is the flow for your certain sequence. Okay, uh, last question. Does the groove allow for pressure differential between the two systems, i.e. flow from heating to cooling with a small amount of flow? Uh, yes, uh, the groove will be able to compensate all these things. So you don't need to worry about some uh, compensation in the system. Uh, which some people do that. So with this valve, the groove will compensate that. And a follow-up question. I know I said last question. Um, is there a max pressure between a system that we must be below? Sorry, Michaela, I didn't get that. Sure. Is there a max pressure between the system that we must be below? Uh, actually, it depends. So you have to follow the pressure drop. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be like a pressure dependent valve. And of course, you have a maximum pressure on that as well for a maximum, a maximum pressure rate on the body that you are able to do. And you have the maximum differential pressure, which means the maximum pressure, uh, differential pressure that you're going to have a pressure independent valve. So, yeah, we have that on our tech doc. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rodrigo, for that excellent presentation. I want to thank you all for participating in our webinar today. If you should have any follow-up questions, um, you can contact us and we'll assist you accordingly. Um, our next webinar is going to be on the 7th of March at 1 p.m., and it's going to be on our new PMB and PKB actuators. Thank you so much, and everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you, guys.